Hi, welcome to the Lisa Saunders Show. Today I have a co-host with me, Dr. Joanne Z. Moore, the publisher of the new lifestyle magazine, Pathfinder, a companion guide for the widower's journey. She's been on with me a couple times before. Um, as a widow herself, Dr. Moore believes it's important for those who are widowed to still cook, even if it's just for yourself or to learn how to cook if it was your spouse who had done all the cooking in your marriage. To help us cover that topic, I'm so excited. I To introduce you to the internationally recognized French <laughs> chef, Jacques Pepin of Madison, Connecticut, who I first met over the phone this year when I interviewed him for an article I was doing on Julia Child, who was a friend of his and also a one-time TV co-host, because I wanted to talk about her widow years, what she did with them. Uh, you'll find that article in the November-December issue of Pathfinder. Last fall, Pepin filmed his 14th PBS TV cooking series, Jacques Pepin Heart and Soul, at KQED in San Francisco, California. The series is scheduled to air this fall in time for Pepin's 80th birthday. A companion cookbook to the series will be released in early October 2015. Pepin was born in France. His love for cooking developed when, as a child, he helped his parents in their restaurant. He ultimately served as personal chef to three French heads of state, including Charles de Gaulle. After moving to the United States in 1959, Pepin first worked at a historic French restaurant in New York City. He later became director of research and new development for Howard Johnson's and was charged with developing a line of food for the restaurant chain. At the same time, he earned his bachelor's degree, then a master's in 18th century French literature at Columbia University. Pepin starred in a PBS series with Julia Child called Julia and Jacques, Cook, Jacques Cooking at Home. The 22-episode series won an Emmy Award and a James Baird Foundation Award in 2001. A former columnist for the New York Times, Pepin is a contributing editor to Food and Wine magazine. He was awarded France's highest civilian honor, the Legion of Honor Medal, in 2004. Pepin continues to teach at Boston University and is a dean of special programs at the International Culinary Center in New York City. Now, I don't usually read people's bio, but that's <laughs> just knocked me over. Welcomes, welcomes. <laughs> Thank you so much for driving, what, an hour to Thank you. To no, it's not that far, like 40 <laughs> minutes. I thought it was father. Someone introduced me last week telling that man was chef to three French presidents, and the three of them are dead. <laughs> <laughs> So that made you feel bad. All right. right? <laughs> and you're going to go have dinner in Mystic tonight? Absolutely. That's we're going to the, to the oyster restaurant there. Mm -hmm. That's going to be fun. Yeah, that will be fun. How many is in your party? How many are you going? Just uh, my wife and my friend Tom and his wife Christine and oh. our two dogs. And I know that's wonderful. Paco and Gaston. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> what are their names? Paco and Gaston. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, this was so perfect. You know, I was so thrilled that you, I was able to interview you over the phone to talk about Julia Child. And uh -huh. I didn't realize you weren't just her TV co-host, that you were friends and you would go to their house and have dinner. You and she would cook and, mm -hmm. right? And Paul would uh, make the drinks and take photographs. Sure. I mean, you know, I met Julia in 1960. Six old. So that's a long, long time ago. Yes. And she had never at that time published a book. And she never done television. That time it didn't exist yet. And then she never was really the food editor or food writer for a magazine newspaper. So she was pretty unknown. In fact, she just came from France not that long uh, before that. And we spoke, if I remember, in French. Our first meeting, your French was better than my English. Oh, yes. really? <laughs> That's funny, yeah. So I stayed with her and we taught at BU for many, many years also mm -hmm. together. So yes, we were very friends. And I, and I noticed you have other photographers and you also do some of the artwork. Uh, for I, I saw one of your cookbooks had your artwork yes. all over. It was beautiful. Yeah, I do a fair amount of painting and artwork. That's In fact, I have a new website with my painting now. So Okay, we might as well say what it is since yes, we're talking right. about it. Um, JacquesPepinArt.com, right. so they can uh, people can check that out. Uh -huh. um, now you just came off doing a cruise, uh, cooking or teaching uh -huh. cooking or speaking. Yeah, I am di culinary director of Oceania Cruise Line, so I do a couple of cruises a year with my wife, and I do demonstration 
I was there with my daughter, my granddaughter, oh, how nice. my son-in-law. Uh huh. So uh, Claudine, my daughter, and my granddaughter Shari gave demonstration with me. I gave a lecture. Uh, yeah, and I get involved with the chef a little bit too. Oh, it's so, wonderful. Uh, and you said a lot of um, the passengers were widowed. Yes, a fair correct? amount. In those, I mean, those are extraordinary. You can afford it, you know, an extraordinary right. way of spending your time because, like. You know, we used to travel. I used to take group from Boston University. And uh, when you have a bus and you change hotel room every three or four days visiting different country, it is pretty tiring. difficult, you yeah. know, tiring. But then on a boat, you know, on a ship like this, you go, you're in Rome. Fine, you come back at night, you have your room and uh, you have your restaurant. You don't carry any luggage. The day after, you're in Barcelona. The day after, in Monte Carlo. And we're in Marseille. And we're in Ibiza you know, in Malaga, Spain. So that's a great way of seeing the world, no question. Now, how about for uh, the widowed that are at home cooking? You, Joanne, you believe it's important for people that t to well, keep cooking, right? Food is so important. Yes. It's... It is for me. <laughs> it is. As a physical therapist, I focus on what's good for us in terms of our health, nutrition, for exercise, and for function. But food is so much more than that. Food. Cool. The name of your book is, the new book, is Heart and, heart and, soul, yeah, right. heart and soul, and that's exactly what food is. Yeah. But when you're living alone and on a tight budget, perhaps, as many of us are, we still want to make our meal special. Sure. It's three times a day, and I know a lot of times I just cook an omelet and sit in front of the TV. Omelet is great. Well, the, <laughs> oh, good, I'm on the right that. track. <laughs> we tend to get into a routine where we eat the same things because it's easiest. And, es yeah. and especially if, if our late spouse was the person who did the cooking most of the time in the family, uh -huh. sometimes the person's left with not a large repertoire of menu options. Right, true. And so... That's what I really love about this book, uh, the simple and healthy uh, book, right. because you explain so well how to make each recipe. You're very detailed in the mechanics of putting the food together. Yeah, and if it, you eat that food, you'll die in good health. We <laughs> will die in really good health. <laughs> and it tends to have ingredients that I already have in the kitchen. Good. That's tough. And, that's one point, certainly, you know, I mean, I've been married 40 years and I don't remember one night that my mo my, my, my wife and I didn't, uh, you know, sit down, cook dinner, we sit down like mm -hmm. last night and uh, share the news of the day and share a bottle of wine mm -hmm. sometime too, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing to eat at home, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, if you don't know how to cook... For me, so much part of my life, so much part of my youth, so much part of who I am, you already have a friend who cook, you know, hopefully. So if you have a friend who cook, you say, can I come? I'll bring a <laughs> bottle of wine. I'll come here earlier. Can I sit down and talk and do? And, you know, uh, that's one way. Another way, certainly, to use the supermarket. I did two books called Fast Food My Way. And what I did, I do what? You do in a professional kitchen. In a professional kitchen, you have the prep cook who come. He bone out the fish. He bone out the chicken. He slice the mushroom. He wash the salad. You know, he chop the shallots and so forth. Mm -hmm. When you come, everything is ready for me. So with a minimum amount of time, one, two minutes, I can do a fish dish because the fish is ready. Some shallots are ready. Some, some mushroom, a dash of wine. Bring it to a board. Cook it fine. Use the supermarket in the same way. I go to the supermarket. You go to the... I don't know, the daily counter, even there, I have like eight different types of, uh, of olives, you know. So I take a bowl, I choose my olive, little bowl of uh, mozzarella cheese, some dry tomato too. I'm making a salad there. Then I, I get home, I put a bit of olive oil on top, I have some basil, I buy a package of uh, sliced ham. I took a slice of ham to hang above like a martini glass. You fill it up with that salad, you have a beautiful first course. Wow. Fine, you know. <laughs> Uh, another thing we do, take a chicken, a roast chicken, fresh, you know. You don't know, you can, and you, you can take some shear to cut it, or even if you massacre it a little bit, doesn't matter. You have pre-washed salad in the supermarket now. You can take your salad on a big tray, you have the juice of that chicken, 
you mix some olive oil in there, a bit of vinegar to do a great sauce. Mix, you pour all of that on your salad and your chicken cut into pieces. You have a big tray of that, and it's great. And it's good, really, the day Sounds after really or cold. Simple. You know, there is many, many things you can do like that. The supermarket have never been as good as they are today with food halfway done for you. You have, you know, uh, skinless, boneless breast of chicken. You have pre, uh, pre-washed pre spinach and you have a non-stick pan. And, you know, you put it in there. In those shows, I did four dishes and it, I did it sometimes with the package of the supermarket to do right there in 30 minutes, you know. Mm-hmm. Simple dessert with fruit and all that. Follow the season. Go to market, to, to farm stand, you know, where you have beautiful tomato that time of the year now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you have a beautiful tomato, you have a bit of olive oil, a bit of coarse salt on top of it, there is nothing better than that. I mean, it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be complicated. Mm-hmm. Anyone can do that, you know. Now, if a person, if their spouse did all the cooking, what what do you recommend for the person who's just suddenly has to learn how to cook and they feel embarrassed to ask somebody at 70 no, years I, old, how do you, how do you cook? What I, do I need? As I said, you have a friend, you bring a bottle of wine, you start <laughs> this way, you know, you start this way and say, how do you do that? Oh, that's great. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, frankly, you take a chicken, you put salt on top, put it into your oven at 400 degrees for an hour without doing anything and it's going to be pretty good right. without any basting or anything. Or as I said, buy a chicken and mm-hmm. start this way, you know, small, mm-hmm couple of tomato mm-hmm. and uh, by yourself and you do enjoy it put the news on you know to get a nice salad right. set up the table right. you know i tend to eat on top of the sink if i by myself but my <laughs> wife will set up the table for herself put candle on the table even she right. already does that you right. know, so she has who uh, does most of the cooking you or your wife Gloria? well i do a lot of cooking i'm always doing a recipe or doing one thing or another but she's very good cook too Okay. So sometimes she certainly she cooked, and it's not like when I come in, she say, "Darling, what do you think?" She usually say, "Don't touch anything." <laughs> <laughs> do you argue if you're preparing something together? No, 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 I no not really. Way. No, no uh, I, uh, I, uh, I've been married forty years, so you know, if we don't agree on something, we do what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> right, but when so. we agree, we do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any cookbooks, because you have so many, you have 27 cookbooks, right? Right, right. Would, Is there anyone in particular for the person who's never cooked and is Certainly the, the fast food my way. The fast I food have two, fast food my way and more fast food my way. I mean, I give you a lot of tips like that from the supermarket to pick up a thing. You, with a little mm-hmm. transformation, it becomes your own, and you put it there. Sometimes just putting it in a nice bowl, you know, a bit of olive oil on top, that's it. Because um, I was reading in one of them, it must have been the fast food one, I, you talk about how you, you don't walk in and then t- take your coat off and then boil water. You c- walk in the door, bo- start boiling water, then you take your coat off. I mean, just well, you give when little we, tips yeah, like certainly that. Right? When we, you know, when I was in a, in a restaurant or when you have to cook at home or if you do those competition on television, first thing you do, you start boiling water. You don't know what's going to be with it. But you start <laughs> oh, okay, boiling. so that's... So. So just like in movies, when somebody's about right. to have a baby in the house, uh, somebody's always boiling it. water for some reason. A cook is the, a chef is the same way. You have to right. start that start that no, water. I mean, you know, in your refrigerator, I always have eggs. I love eggs, and eggs now there is no excuse not to have good quality, you know, organic eggs. I have a little lady uh, in Madison there where I go get my my eggs. She has free chicken and uh, free ranch chicken, and uh, there is nothing better than an egg with a little piece of butter or some olive oil, some herb from the garden. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have many, many ways of, uh, of doing it. Or then next time you slice tomato with it, some scallion, put the egg on top to do a frittata, you know, or a tortilla, the Spanish cold, a bit of olive oil on top. Next time you slice a tomato in it, you can do many, many variations. Now, you Likewise said something with funny about the souffle, how it makes you... Your lo- she, Joanne asked you before the show, is there anything that you, <laughs> that's been botched up on TV? And you said, no, but the souffle, you're, what, what was the word you used? Nervous? Well, sometimes or... it goes, yeah, there is already a bit of suspense with the souffle. Oh, suspense, you know, that's right. what's suspense. But you know, I've done a souffle where, uh, I say, okay, let it go down. Now it starts collapsing. I say, let it go. Then I turn it upside down and mold it and serve it in another, another way. The tomato sauce or something on now, top. Now, souffle, that's not simple enough for the beginning cook, right? Do you, do you need to work well, up to yeah, that? Yeah, I have a book, a, a book called The Apprentice, The Story of My Life. Mm-hmm. So it's not a book of recipe, but I have one recipe per chapter. And I gave the souffle of my mother when my mother was 
you know, she had a restaurant all her life, but when she first married, she didn't know how to cook too well. And, uh, and uh, my mother died last year. She was 99 and a half. She almost made it to 100. Wow. But in any case, uh, she knew my, my father loved souffle. She's souffle. So she knew how to do a white sauce, at least, you know, a bit of butter, some flour, and milk to do a, a bechamel or white sauce. And she knew you put eggs in it. Too. She didn't know you had to separate the egg, beat the egg white. or whatever. So mm. she never separated the egg. She breaks the egg like for an omelette. She mixes it with her white sauce, a lot of cheese in the oven, and it works. <laughs> and I have that. And you can do it a day ahead, put it into the oven. So I have that. In, so you can do that type of mm-hmm. souffle, yeah? Very mm-hmm. easy. Well, it sounds like you're a very social cook. Like, would that be a good thing for the widow to well, do? Well, one yeah. thing that you said that sparked my interest was cook gathering things at the grocery store or a farmer's market. Right. Because that's a place where you can also talk to the other shoppers. Right. And it's a social event exactly, for you yeah. when you go out. Right. You can talk to somebody buying something and go, ooh, what do you do with that? Right. How do you prepare it? Exactly. And before you know it, you've made a friend, and they, they're happy to tell you. Absolutely. How and when they... you're a widow or a widow, try yeah. to have a friend and two and cook together. You know, it's, right. very, it's easier. You'll be better in an area. Say, well, I'll do the dish. I don't know how to do that. You do it. You show mm-hmm. it to me. And, you know, first you have a conversation. It's a social event. Mm-hmm. You share the food, and the sharing is very, very important. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I could see starting is, a social group. You cannot cook differently, so you put a lot of yourself in your cooking, a lot mm-hmm. of love. So if you cook with someone, then it does help. And yes. It becomes a, a social thing. It should be social. Yeah. And uh, any kind of a group meal, bringing a potluck to a church supper or something like that, where you right. bring and you share with others and Absolutely. they share with you. And sharing recipes. Um, we put a, recipes in our magazine every month that we mm-hmm. think people could could manage. You know. Good. Uh, so, do you cook for all your friends, or do both of you? And your yeah, wife last family? Sunday we had fifty people at the house. Oh my We God. we played bull, you know, which is a French game called pétanque, and we are a bunch of us, at least seven of us, who have a, a bull court. You know, we play. So at least we do seven big parties during the summer. And it was our turn, so we did that. Fifty people, and uh, we had a big, big meal. Yeah, and so you, being day. you, wouldn't probably ever dare dream of bringing in a frozen lasagna. No, no, no one brings store. food. I, I, you know, I had my daughter mm. giving me, my son-in-law, with a chef too, and my friend Jean Claude, that I mentioned I was with, Gloria, of course, my wife, and uh, so we start cooking several days ahead, and uh, we had a big. Uh, and what would your menu be for such a party? We have seven hors d'oeuvres that we pass around to start seven. with, from caviar, with uh, you know the, the caviar in, in little uh, crab shell that the Vietnamese do. I mean, we had uh, some some little shoe, you know, like profit roll stuffed with cheese, mm-hmm. or the one which we have stuffed with uh, with shrimp that we cooked. We had uh, what else? I mean, we had a lot of different type of order, some pate of pheasant, you know, we, we some salami that my my wife did. All of those were ordered, and then after that, we had uh, a big big tomato salad. I had a a big dish of beans, white beans with. Um, with uh, spinach in it, a lot of onion, garlic, herb, uh, and we had I had three shoulder of veal that big, wow. well, like fifty pound of meat that I cooked into a cottachina, you know, one of those big box where you put them inside and the coal is on top, so that kind of very. Uh, wow. And then I had my friend Jacques Torres, with baby the greatest chocolatier pastry chef in the U.S., came from New York and he brought cases of. Uh, but only chocolate and different type of cake and tart and ice cream and it was well, enough to you, eat for a hundred. How do you keep wow. your weight down? Because food's such a central part of your life. I'm squeezed in. <laughs> so, well, take my pants at night. I look like I'm real. I wish that could work. <laughs> are, we, are you? Do you must because I read that you really most even though you have desserts in your cookbooks, you said mostly at night you'll just have fresh fruit. No fruit. Right. We have we have cheese. We're not big on dessert, but uh, I am. I am uh, too fat. I mean, I'm not too fat, but I'm a bit short for my weight. <laughs> that is, if I were six foot tall, I'd be about perfect. Oh, <laughs> I'm five no, five. No, you look great. Like I just don't know how people keep their weight down that love to cook. No, but you know, we we do. I mean, for me, the most important thing: fresh food, follow the season. 
you know, when that's in season, fun, like tomato and stuff like that. We have a lot mm -hmm. of stuff in the garden. Mm -hmm. You follow, uh, avoid processed food. You know, at you all costs. That's a, no, that's a yeah. Key. I mean, you don't have to torture yourself with. If you do that, you will eat, you know, uh, healthy and, uh, and, you know, of course, uh, people who tend to put more weight than other people, but on the whole, nothing is wrong in my book, but processed food, that type of thing, we don't eat. You don't know what it is. You don't even know how to read all mm -hmm. of the. Uh, you see those things, right. and, and, and it's terrible, and for kids it's terrible, and now mm -hmm. it's even worse, because the kids now choose those processed food by color, they want the blue one or the red one, can right. you imagine how far you are from the food, you open it, you don't know what it is, what it's made of, that's, oh, right. oh, that's terrible. Now you said you um, eat free range eggs, I, I do as well, only because I feel sorry for the chicken, I, I think they're having a better life if they're just... <laughs> Walking no, around, the egg, but egg is, it, is much better. There is no it, it tastes, there's a difference oh, yeah. in the taste. I mean, the lecithin, even in hell, the lecithin in the egg yolk, much more lecithin, much less fat in it. The egg white is much higher in albumin. If you beat a souffle or do a thing, it will hold oh. better. I mean, there is, really? and so the there's taste, really a the taste is oh, the taste is quite different. I mean, there is no comparison. I wonder why. And the chicken is happy because why? the chicken is happy. You think? So I guess the chicken is releasing. I don't know happy hormones. I don't know what chickens release. No, but, they knew. <laughs> you know? They knew. They even did. You know, they put chicken chicken in room as big as this one. There is like two thousand chicken. I mean, and they are territorial, so they cut their big, blind them to oh. prevent them from fighting. Oh. And the noise is atrocious. They realize that by putting acoustic tile, they lower the cholesterol in the eggs by 20%. Just the noise oh. factor. So the chickens are stressed. In addition, a chicken should do one egg a day. They put lamp light on top of them because the hormonal system of the chicken works with the light when you early in the morning, mm -hmm. <laughs> to bed at night. So by putting that, they end up with one and a half, sometimes two eggs a day. So, you know, the ch it's horrible. Oh, Chicken gosh. is totally contrived. And there is no reason for that. I buy a dozen eggs from a farmer next to me, a little lady from uh, from Jamaica, you know, who does, she has running chicken there and two. Pay four dollars a dozen. How mm -hmm. much is that an egg? You know, it's like 30 cents and eggs, and you pay $2 for one in the supermarket, that's not worth it. So right. it's not necessarily very expensive to buy no, good not. quality no, food no. if you just are smart about it. Right. Do you have any uh, advice for buying meat or...? Well, meat, you know, the supermarket are, uh, have a fair amount of very good meat. Now, you know, it's ex more expensive when you buy, I mean, I try to, to buy, you know, organic chicken as well. So for this, it's not that more expensive. And if you know what to do with a chicken, you can do two or three meals out of it. Right. You know, you get a mm -hmm. lot. I never throw anything out. Well, let's fat talk to, about that a little to, bit. The fat to come out of the chicken, I saute potato with it. First, it's a monounsaturated fat. It's much better than other fat for you. It makes it very crispy. The skin I use to make crackling sometimes in salad. Then you use the two legs to do a, a, a stock. I mean, I did a... <clears throat> for years, excuse me, I had a column in the New York Times called The Purposeful Cook, and I did a book called Cuisine Economic. How to cook for a party of six, eight people for less than five dollars at the time, or whatever it was. But I can still do it for almost no money at all. People don't know what to use. I can't go to a supermarket. I go to like Ferraro in New Haven. There I can't get pig feet or any type of, you know, chicken carcass, chicken neck to. You pay like fifty, sixty cents. You know, eighty cents, a dollar twenty-five, whatever, for a package of chicken neck. Well, well, I put a pound of beans in it, white beans, a carrot, an onion, a thing like that. I mean, for like maybe four dollars, five dollars, I have a big dish wow. of. Uh, I pick the meat of the bone to add it to the meat, or you just suck on the bone. You know, there is many things like that that you can do if you. Is that you know, recipe I, I want, those economical recipes in any particular of your? Well, I, I had that book called Cuisine Economic. It was for that, but oh. very often in other book, I have very expensive food. I mean, you know, I was born during the war, and my mother was a, a very miserly cook, so mm -hmm. I have inherited mm -hmm. this. Right, I never throw anything out, right. uh, you know. And uh, I remember when I first got married, I had that argument with my wife. I went on the road for a couple of days. And then I came home and I said, why didn't you use that? We have that, that what did you do? You bought something else. Why did you do that? We had those stupid arguments with that. <laughs> now when I came home, everything is clean. I don't know what she does. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I've learned to use up my food and never get rid of leftovers, especially living here. Since I've lived here for five years, we've had two hurricanes and lost power twice for a week. And so I'm annoyed that I didn't just keep using my leftovers when I could and, and I, you know what I mean, it's emptying out my freezer. Do you, do you have the, the, the frozen biggest, food? The big, or you oh, yes, yes. Okay. The biggest thing is, uh, is soup. I do a soup. I mean, yesterday I did a soup. Uh, because I had two uh, uh, zucchini out of the garden, I had a couple of things. The salad was getting wilted in the in the refrigerator. I forget what I had. Like uh, I had some carrots, some uh, that we had over the weekend when we did that thing. We are getting uh, dry too. I put all of that with water, salt. That's it. Yeah, and you were it. And I had some sour cream left over. Then I add that to it. I mean, I look in my refrigerator. I empty the refrigerator all the time. Nothing goes to the garbage. Mm -hmm. And you can freeze the soup if you don't need it Absolutely. right away. Yeah. So there's no reason for food to go bad in and the you refrigerator. You mentioned something about grits. You threw grit because you know you're boiling the water. I'm reading about you. You're hanging up your coat while the water's boiling, and you're throwing in grits or something. Yeah, what very does that often. Do for the I mean, soup? you know, no, you do a soup. You'll say, "Well, I'm doing a soup. Takes four hours." No. If you have one of those, uh, if you have some chicken stock that you can buy, or even one of those bouillon cube, you know, the chicken, uh, there's some good one now on the market, which are done naturally. Water, bring that to a bowl. If I have a piece of onion, a piece of zucchini, a piece of anything, I chop it, or I put it on the, on the, um, on the grater, you know. So mm -hmm. by the time it comes back to a bowl in there, it's basically cooked. And what, what do I do in it? I put a little handful of vermicelli, you know, or, some couscous or some oatmeal or so uh, some alfabeto and it cook one, two minutes, less than 10 minutes. My, my, my soup is cooked. The longest thing is to bring, bring that water to a boil. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> and so certainly that's... And then leftover idea. bread. Never throw any piece left of bread. You do croton with it. You do thing. You put it in the soup. My mother used to do a soup, just some water mm -hmm. and uh, some herb from the garden. We had sliced all mm -hmm. bread. And the herb, she pour the boiling water on top of it, and she put some Gruyere cheese or whatever on top, a bit of olive oil, and we had a soup. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. Now, we only have, we have a little less than two minutes. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about the retreat in Madison, is his hometown, or because you work yeah. there at most, or you have a couple minutes. We'll be having a retreat for people who have lost a spouse and who are rebuilding their lives. At the Mercy Center. That'll be at the Mercy Center, and people can go onto our website and get more information about that. But I'm just so excited to have spent this time with you because you. food is so important. Food brings people for quality together. Of life. Know, so absolutely. I mean, you know, everyone is the same around the table. There is no distinction. There is no political implication, racial implication, gender implication mm -hmm. in food. It brings people together. Even on know. a budget, you can eat Ab really on, well. On a budget, I can do, you know, I was listening to the mayor, I think, of whatever town, and he mm -hmm. said, I'm doing like my people who have no money. I have to live on $5 a day or $4 a day. He said, if you give me $5 a day, a family of four, at $20, you'll eat like a king, <laughs> um, I mean, without any question. Well, thank you so much for coming thank on you. the show. I'm yes, really thrilled that you yes. took the time thank to you do so that. Much. Thank you very much. You're a big help. It thank was you a lot for of having fun. me. Thank well, you. thank you so much for joining us on the Lisa Saunders Show, and I will see you next week.